Azure Gleam. Conspiracy in the Air. Having laid Lenato low, the Kingdom's army proceeds south. Count Roe, who had prior declared fealty to the Empire, surrenders, and Aryan Road falls back into Kingdom hands. With its foothold in the West lost, the Empire amasses troops in the former Arendelle territory to the south, prompting the army of Fargus to strike before Adrestia can regain its footing. It's nice Aryan Road fell with little more than a hand wave, but it's hardly comfortable knowing the enemy is still on our doorstep. Comfortable or no, we must take what few chances we do have to rest. Battle will be upon us again before we know it. Not to mention the fortress is still a target. I mean, who wouldn't want their very own impregnable stronghold? Our spies report that the enemy plans to mount such an attack from Arendelle land. Arendelle, huh? It's been two years since the territory came under the Emperor's control. The wind carries rumors that Edelgard has been keeping Lord Arendelle imprisoned in his home since then. If it's true, I'll... I'll... No. Were the enemy to strike, and the fortress city to somehow fall, our path forward in this war would grow exceedingly perilous. The West doesn't face the kind of constant threats we do, so there aren't as many strongholds here as in the North, right? Basically. Though my uncle did say that started to change at least a tiny bit in the past couple of years. In other words, the entire western region of the kingdom is likely to fall into enemy hands if we retreat from Aryan Road now. Indeed. Which is exactly why we must take the offensive and restrain this Imperial Snake before it can sink its fangs into us. Hey, it'll be nice to strike first for once. It feels like we've been on the back foot for a while now. Right you are. And remaining on perpetual defense would only lead to more meaningless, preventable deaths. Offense is the best defense, I always say. We'll crush anyone who has the gall to stand against us. There you go, getting carried away again. Look at them, all stunned into speechlessness. Hmm? Your Majesty, I've bear terrible news. Calm yourself. What is it? The convoy escorting Count Ro to the capital has been attacked by an unknown assailant. They've sustained heavy losses, and it seems Count Ro has gone missing amid the chaos. I see. And these assailants, we know nothing about them? Very little, Your Majesty. The survivors claim to have been attacked by numerous mages. Mages? No. What's wrong? Do you know who it is? You saw the court mage Cornelia during our battle at Ferdia, yes? Well, she disappeared almost immediately after. It's likely she has been burrowed away in Western Fargus ever since. Which leads me to wonder if this attack wasn't her handiwork somehow. It's merely a feeling, though. I'd like to look into it further, if possible. Something tells me the Imperial soldiers won't wait around patiently while we go off hunting for clues. Perhaps you should send a separate unit to investigate, while we attend to the Empire. Yes, that would be prudent for now. We cannot afford to lower our guard for even a moment.
your time. This is true. Well, What is it? The story goes... Can I be of service?
That reminds me. Indeed. Very well then. How may I help you? Can I be of service? Good day to you. Indeed. Greetings, friend. Nothing to report. Got it. Have a minute. Good seeing you. Not good.
Greetings. done. Let's give it a go. It is you. I wish to speak with you. Thank you. 
My instruction comes at a high price. Don't neglect your daily studies. Supplies are the lifeblood of any army. Everything has its use. Welcome. Come back soon. Hey there. Need something? See you around. Welcome. I carry a little of everything here. Hope to see you again soon. Training can be the difference between victory and defeat. Can't wait to see how you do. Supplies are the lifeblood of any army. Everything has its use. Time to work you into shape.
work with this. Now be in mine. Only thorns left on this rose. I can't wait to test my newfound strength. I've grasped new strength. I'm getting better. For his majesty. Training can be the can't wait to see how you do. I carry a little of everything here. You've got an eye for quality, friend. Hope to see you again soon. Time to work you into shape. Welcome this change.
could train together. Only thorns left on this rose. I still have talent, I see. How can I best use this power? How can I best use this power? Got to give this a try sometime. Training can be the difference between victory and defeat. I'll have to learn something new. Test my newfound strength. How can I best use this power? I think I'm getting the hang of this. I have yet more power to unleash. Time to work you into shape. I wonder if this will suit me. Will this help me grow stronger?
devotes were sweating greatly. I work to grow. I'll be able to help even more now. I'm a better man now than I was five minutes ago. I have yet more power to unleash. Time to work you into shape! My interest is piqued. For training, you'll be unstoppable. the true enemy. Come back whenever you're hungry. I carry a little of everything here. See you again soon. Hunger is the true enemy. The flavor's not really there. Might want to try something different next time. Wait, for me? Great! I love this stuff. Then you know my food preferences? But how? No, it matters not. You have my thanks. Come back whenever you're hungry. Hunger is the true enemy.
Yeah, the flavor's not really there. Might want to try something different next time. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is definitely one of the foods I love. Oh, but this is simply scrumptious. I love, love, love it. Come back whenever you're hungry. Hunger is the true enemy. Solid, solid. Wow, this is so good. I had no idea you had this kind of skill. Huh, you made this? Pretty good. Come back whenever you're hungry. Hunger is the true enemy. Great! I bet anyone would love this stuff. You made this. Impressive. Oh, I love this! Thank you very much! Come back whenever you're hungry! Glad I tracked you down. Have you ever heard of Tobias's mercenaries? What an odd question. Tobias, hmm? The name does sound familiar somehow. Huh, I thought everybody knew about them. Captain Burling must have exaggerated that part. Anyway, they were a big mercenary group my old captain used to be in when she was a kid. Apparently their leader, Tobias, was so loyal to one of the local lords that he was practically an honorary advisor. Strange. I thought mercenaries kept interactions with their employers strictly business. Most do. But not only did these mercs fight for this lord, they pitched in building the castle town too. They even went so far as to trade their swords and bows for hoes and pitchforks, and tilled the barren land for the farmers of the region. And they opened up shops in town when the Lord was going through some financial troubles. It sounds like they went far beyond what is expected of most mercenaries. Unless... Is that something you all do? Oh, not at all. We're fighters through and through. Nobody in their right mind would ask us to drop everything to become farmers or merchants. Basically, both the mercenaries and the Lord were doing stuff way different from how they normally do. Yes, of course. A bunch of sellswords planting seeds and tending a shop is certainly unheard of. In the end, this captain grew so close to the noble of the region that people started calling him the Lord's right-hand man. I guess my point is, it doesn't matter what you are, 
mercenary, right? Noble? You aren't tied to any one role just because of the title you hold. Even battle-hardened mercs can end up as farmhands if that's what the client calls for. And if that's possible, surely a noble can do anything they want, too. <laughs> True enough. That ties into our conversation from before as well. Thank you. I will give the matter some thought. Good. I know it won't be easy to find the answer, but I'm here to bounce ideas off if you ever need it. And no matter what, I'm just glad my old captain's story actually helped you. All this stuff about Tobias and his mercenaries really caught me off guard the first time I heard it. You were right about that. But, hmm, I cannot shake the feeling that this Tobias person is familiar somehow. Wait, I remember now. I believe the noble in your story may have actually been my grandmother. Really? The last head of House Galatea? Yes. I don't remember very well since I was still so young, but I recall she had a friend by the name Tobias. Though I find it difficult to believe the old man I knew was once a strapping mercenary captain. If it really was him, he must have climbed the ranks even further than I realized. I mean, not just anyone can meet a noble's family like that. Who would have thought this old story would hit so close to home? <laughs> Certainly not me. Mercedes, did you go out? Yes, I went to the town of Camulus to help the church. I see. And how did you find it? The townspeople seemed fine enough, but the clergy were very busy. As you know, lots of people fled to Fargus when the war started. And while a number of towns took in refugees, Camulus is particularly busy on that front. In that case, I should send reinforcements and resources from the capital. I will speak with Lady Rhea about this presently. Thank you, Dimitri. I'm sure the clergy will be pleased to hear it. I'm incredibly grateful to you for coming to the church's aid, you know. Most of those people would have ended up homeless if not for your actions. As I recall, you fled from the Empire yourself at a rather young age. Yes, and it was awful. We had nothing to eat and nowhere to shelter from the wind and rain. If not for the priest who helped us, I don't know what would have happened. <sighs> Are you alright, Dimitri? You seem sad. My apologies, Mercedes. But may I speak plainly? I don't need my permission to do that, silly. What's troubling you? I have been wondering for some time if accepting the Central Church was the correct decision. By giving them shelter, I have also given the Empire the perfect excuse for invasion. You took them in because you thought it was the right thing to do. Isn't that so? Yes. The Church of Seros is deeply entwined with the Kingdom's history and politics. The Crown's authority is granted by the Church, which also takes part in governing our villages. Were I to sunder that connection, nobles and commoners alike would be furious. The Kingdom would be split anew, and chaos would reign. Hmm, that is a tough one. It seems like you're going to end up with a fight no matter what you do. Well, at the very least, I know the townspeople are grateful. But I also know it's not as simple as all that. I'm sorry. That probably didn't do much to help ease your concerns. No. I should apologize for making you listen as I prattle on endlessly. Oh, nonsense. 
If it helped you in any way, I'm glad to do it. Well, I certainly do feel better. Thank you, Mercedes. And please know that I am here for you for whatever reason, no matter how small. So late. I didn't mean to take this much of a detour. Just giving back? Hey, to do. Hope I didn't worry you. You didn't. You were in town, yes? I went to pick up some supplies, but on the way back I saw these flowers blooming, and I just couldn't help but pick some. Ah, Yeros. They're used as an ingredient in healing salves. Although you can also slap the leaves on your wounds and get mostly the same effect. Oh, and I plan on soaking them in alcohol. It'll produce a liquid that can be used for a wonderful ointment. Yeah, though I suppose it would be faster to just use healing magic. You seem well informed on the subject. Lenato knew all about it. So, I picked up a few things from him. Lord Lenato had an interest in plants? Oh, sure. He kept tons of botanical encyclopedias and books like that in his room. He loved flowers. He even kept a small herb garden at Castle Gaspar. Hey, you like gardening too, right? I mean, you were always watering the flowers in the greenhouse back at Garrick Mock. I suppose I do, though I know little of the medicinal properties. Yeah, I guess knowing how to grow plants is different from knowing how to use them. Even so, the greenhouse was a treasure to me. You're right about that. I found flowers there I'd never even seen in Castle Gaspar's garden. I would like very much to visit this garden of yours one day. We should go! Of course, a lot has happened since I last saw it, but my younger siblings should still be looking after it. I look forward to it. Though, how did Lord Lenato come to know so much about medicinal herbs? Uh, he used to serve Grand Duke Rufus, so... Maybe he studied them while he was in the capital. Perhaps. Sorry, I'm just sitting here chatting away when I should be off making myself useful. Of course. Medicinal herbs. Hmm. What kind of greeting is that? I gave you my title, not free license for insolence. Spare me the lecture. I have a question about the lords of Southern Fraldarius territory. So you're having trouble with them as well, are you? Let me guess. They're withholding provisions. Or perhaps they refuse to send troops they promised. How did you know? Because I've been through the same thing with them any number of times. Southern soldiers are unskilled, but they make up for it with sheer numbers. I need their cooperation, yet they refuse to negotiate. And I have no idea how to convince them. Yes. I imagine they're dealing with their own issues. And what issues would those be? When they refused to send reinforcements for the invasion of Srang, it was because the lords were embroiled in a succession dispute. If one house sent soldiers, the others would pounce on the opportunity to move against them. But mere letters could never have told you something like that. So you went around to each territory personally? 
Yes. Though considering we're presently on war footing, doing so now would be unwise. Well, that's hardly helpful, but I'll take it into consideration and see what I can do. <laughs> Something funny? Just thinking that you've grown into a fine duke. Were you expecting me to fail? You're the one who gave me the title, after all. True. But I inherited the role when I was much older than you. You're doing extremely well for your age. It seems I raised two very capable sons. Don't tell me you're glorifying Glenn's death again. <sighs> Felix. I've been walking in your footsteps, serving our king and leading an army of knights. After all that, I thought maybe I'd come to understand you a bit better. But I still can't stomach what you said that day. Looks like I overstepped yet again. Perhaps the two of us will never see eye to eye. If Glenn were alive, I half suspect he'd see I was being childish. Well, how'd it go? Any results a good result.